Okay, hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be looking at a really interesting integral. It starts off uh, looking like a trig integral, but it actually very quickly ends up being one we evaluate with summations, and we're going to end up using the zeta function as well. So it's a really exciting one. The problem is the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of cotangent of x times the natural log of sec x dx. Now my first thought when I saw this integral was to make a u sub for ln sec x. And that's because differentiating the natural log of trig functions tends to give us quite interesting results because of course uh, we use chain rule, right? So when we differentiate what's inside the natural log, we get another trig function. And when we differentiate the natural log, we get the reciprocal of the trig function within. So in our case, du, will be equal to the derivative of the inside, and the derivative of sec x is sec x tan x. And then it would be 1 over what's inside, because the derivative of the lateral log is 1 over x. Uh, so of course it's going to be times 1 over sec x, and our sec x's will cancel. So du equals tan x dx. But I'm going to rearrange that, and I'm going to say that that means that du over tan x equals dx. So let's think about how our bounds are going to behave. Well, as x approaches 0, sec x, which is of course 1 over cos x, is going to approach 1, because cos x approaches 1 as x approaches 0, and 1 over 1 is 1. And everyone knows that the natural log of 1 is 0, because it asks us what power of e gives us 1. So as x goes to 0, u will go to 0. And as x goes to pi over 2, 1 over cos x will approach 1 over 0, which of course is going to approach infinity. And the natural log of something approaching infinity is itself infinity. So as x goes to pi over 2, u goes to infinity. So we're now at a stage where we can rewrite our integral. This is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of cot x over tan x times u du. But that's not really good enough because we're integrating with respect to u and so we don't want anything in terms of x. So the first observation that we're going to make is that cot x is itself 1 over tan x. And 1 over tan x divided by tan x is of course going to be equal to 1 over tan squared of x. So let's rewrite this fraction in terms of just the one trig function, which is 1 over tan squared x, giving us our new integral of u over tan squared x. And you might be wondering, why did I choose to write it in terms of tan and not cotangent? And the reason for that is because we've got to remember what our u sub was for. Our u sub was for the natural log of sec x. And that means that e to the u is equal to sec x which means that e to the 2u is equal to sec squared x. And of course that means that e to the 2u minus 1 is equal to tan squared x by the trig identity that 1 plus tan squared x equals sec squared x. So let's rewrite the denominator of our fraction as e to the 2u minus 1. And now we've got an integral in terms of u. And it's at this point that many people might get stuck. You might be tempted to try and use partial fractions or do some other substitutions. But there's a really nice trick we can use here, and this is where the summation starts to come in. So whenever I see something divided by 1 plus or minus something else, what it brings to mind for me, especially with integral problems like this, is the formula for the sum to infinity of a geometric series, right? So for a geometric series that starts with the term a and has a common ratio of r, the sum to infinity is equal to a over 1 minus r. So the question I'm asking myself is how can I turn this fraction into the sum to infinity of a geometric series? Because this doesn't converge at the moment. Well, if I multiply by e to the negative 2u on the top and the bottom, I'm going to have u e to the negative 2u on the top, e to the 2u times e to the negative 2u is 1, and of course negative 1 times e to the negative 2u is negative e to the negative 2u. 
And so I end up with this fraction. And you can see here that that means that my common ratio that I'm multiplying by each term in my geometric series is equal to e to the negative 2u. And my initial term is u e to the negative 2u. And so that means that this is a convergent geometric series. And I can write it as follows. It's the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of the integral from 0 to infinity of, well, our first term is u e to the negative 2u, and we're multiplying by e to the negative 2u each time, which means that we've got e to the negative 2nu multiplied by each of our u's as we go along our progression. And of course, we're doing this with respect to u. And you'll notice that I've swapped the integration and summation sign, and that's because there's no issues with convergence. And now we're looking at a problem that's really approachable, because this can be solved very simply with integration by parts. And I'm going to use the DI method, which is, of course, integration by parts, just simplified a bit. Uh, just laid out in a nice way so we can understand what's going on visually. So I'm going to choose to differentiate my u, differentiate that once I get to 1, differentiate again I get to 0, and I'm going to integrate my exponential term. So the integral of e to the negative 2nu, I would just make a substitution for negative 2nu, which would mean that dx would equal my new variable divided by negative 2nu. So of course my new integrated value will be e to the negative 2nu divided by negative 2n. And if I integrate again, I'm going to get the same thing. I'm going to divide by negative 2n for a second time which of course is going to leave me with e to the negative 2nu divided by 4n squared. Now, with integration by parts, of course, we've got the negatives. We, we have uv minus v du. And so we take this into account with our um, di method by adding across the diagonal and then subtracting and then adding and then subtracting. So the value of our integral, which I'm going to call i, must be equal to the sum from 1 to infinity of these two terms multiplied together. So that's negative u e to the negative 2nu divided by 2n minus e to the negative 2nu divided by 4n squared. And of course, let's not remember that our integral was bounded and that we're evaluating this between u equals 0 and u equals infinity. So when u is equal to infinity, We've got an e to the negative 2nu there, which is of course going to approach e to the negative infinity, which is 0. And we've got another e to the negative 2nu here, which will also approach 0. So our upper bound is just 0. What's our lower bound going to be? Well, when u is equal to 0, our term here, which is negative u e to the, two, e to the negative 2nu, will become 0, because it's got a u in it, and 0 times anything is 0. But our second term here is without the u, because we differentiated that out when we integrated by parts. And so e to the negative 2n0 is e to the 0, which is 1. And so we're going to be subtracting negative 1 over 4n squared, which is, of course, the same as adding 4n, 1 over 4n squared. And we know that 0 plus 1 over 4n squared is just 1 over 4 n squared. So here the solution has revealed itself again in the classic satisfying way. We can take out our quarter and we're now summing from 1 to infinity the reciprocals of the squares, which is equal to a quarter of zeta of 2, which is famously a quarter of pi squared over 6, which is the Basel problem, which was solved, of course, by Euler, named after his hometown. And so we get our answer of pi squared over 24. Uh, I thought this was a great integral because of how uh, we had all of this kind of manipulation of sums hidden underneath one that looked like it was going to involve a lot of trigonometry. And I hope everyone's enjoyed watching. Uh, as a challenge, I'd like to ask you if you can have a look at perhaps creating a general formula for situations where we're dealing with the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the power of s divided by e to the x minus 1 with respect to x. And of course, this isn't exactly what we were looking at earlier, but it was quite similar. So anyone who wants to give that a shot, let me know in the comments what you get. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye.